<laughs> express my thanks to Governor Hochul, the charity leader. Our CEO, Dr. Thomas Caulfield, to the stage to get us started. Thank you. I don't want to step on any of the senator's props down here under the <laughs> desk. <laughs> all right, all right. Yeah. So welcome all. Uh, I want to deeply uh, express my thanks to Governor Hochul, the charity leader, Schumer, Secretary Raimondo, NEC Director uh, Brainard, and Congressman Tonko for not only being here today, but being big advocates for what we're celebrating here today. Um, the monumental announcement further cements New York State position as a global leader in semiconductor manufacturing and the Center for a more resilient industry for our nation. Hello, Carrie. <laughs> I want to also thank our esteemed and state local officials, university partners, and community business leaders. Thank you for your tireless advocacy, unwavering support for GF. Your efforts will have a lasting impact on GF, our industry, and the regions we all operate in. And thank you to our amazing GF team, not only here in Malta, our colleagues in Vermont, and throughout the US and the world. Uh, GF is not just GF, it's Global Foundries. We are a global team, and we act and work as a global entity. <clears throat> I'm also proud of being awarded $1.5 billion. <laughs> and now this is this is direct funding and it's part of a, a, a bigger package of all investments, including the investments GF will make in our future. And it's all part of the Chips and Science Act. Um, Secretary Raimondo and Senator Schumer have been on a mission to strengthen the U.S. competitiveness and resiliency of the U.S. semiconductor supply chain for over the, over the three plus years. And I will tell you, I've been part of that journey and watching them. I don't know of a single senator who is more dedicated to doing the right thing and doing the right thing for their state. And while I know success has a thousand fathers, I am absolutely confident that if it wasn't for Senator Schumer and Secretary Raimondo, we would not have a, a, a CHIPS bill and a CHIPS funding program. So thank you all. With our industry continuing to grow faster than the world economy and essential chips being particularly important given the diverse markets they enable, including automotive, IoT, aerospace, defense, just to name a few, GF will continue to add capacity in line with industry demand and our customer requirements. We are a customer's manufacturing arm. We build capacity to enable our customers. This support from the Department of Commerce will enable GF to continue to invest in our U.S. footprint to complement the growth of our manufacturing capabilities around the globe. The proposed investment will support three key projects of our U.S. manufacturing footprint. The first is an expansion and a diversification of our multi-site, adding critical technologies such as 22FDX and 40 nanometer ESF3 technology platforms. These are already in production in Singapore and Germany, and they're geared towards ensuring domestic supply for U.S. auto industry and enabling multi four fab and geographical sourcing of our global customers. There is no sense of having a global footprint and not making it resilient by making sure you can produce similar technologies across the globe. That is the strength of Global Foundries. The, um, <clears throat> the second part of the program is the construction of a new state-of-the-art fab in Malta to be executed again in alignment to our industry. And make no doubt about it, this is an industry that will double between now and the end of the decade. And that capacity will be added as that demand grows and to build out more of our differentiated technologies and to create bigger scale, more globally cost competitive scale here in Malta, New York. And then the third element or leg of our chips package is the modernization of our Vermont fab. 
upgrading the existing facilities, expanding capacity, and enabling high volume manufacturing of next generation technologies, including gallium nitride. Very important for electrification, very important for power and high speed communication applications. In addition to this federal support, GF has a long history, I would say 15 years plus, a strong partnership and support with the states of New York and Vermont. This fab in New York is one of the most successful private public partnerships of its kind. In fact, I think we are the poster child, or it can be argued, the blueprint that others will follow in the public private partnership to create manufacturing capacity. Now, in their continued partnership, the Empire State Development Corporation will embark on a next phase of this journey together in the capital region. And I would be remiss if I didn't express gratitude to Governor Scott, as well as all the state and local officials and community leaders in Vermont who've supported us not only throughout this process, but for many years we've been manufacturing in the Green Mountain State. That fab has existed for over 60 years through different ownership changes, but it just shows the resiliency of the team and how we can continue to take existing facilities and modernize them and make them relevant to our industry. In partnership with GF, we will continue to invest and develop a new workforce development efforts, curriculum developed, development and internship and apprenticeship programs, K-12 STEM outreach and additional education and training programs in both states. Our employees, both current and future, are what enable GF to be trusted and dependable manufacturing armor for our customers. We deliver differentiated essential chips globally and locally, as I highlighted before. One program I am personally and especially proud of, and I hope others in industry will follow suit and adopt our process, is we recently announced new student loan repay repayment program to help current and future recruits pay down their student debts. The goal is not to compete for talent within this industry. The goal is to attract talent to our industry, and we all need to, to play this to win together. With that, let me just finish by saying, uh, GF will continue to do its part to build a globally resilient semiconductor supply chain. And as an industry, we need to turn our attention to increasing the demand for US made chips and to the growing our talented US semiconductor workforce. I would now like to invite Senate Majority Leader to the stage to make a few comments. Sir, it's all yours. Well, thank you, Tom. And look, thank you for the, I don't think I need this thing. Thank you for the amazing job you have done here at Global Foundries. We have developed a long, close, not only working relationship, but friendship. Because not only is Tom relentless in getting this all done, but he does it with a smile and good cheer that you want to help him every time he asks. Let's have another round of applause for Tom Caulfield. So, ladies and gentlemen, this is a landmark day for the capital region, for upstate New York, and for the entire United States of America, right here in Malta. A day that marks a turning point. This is a day that marks a turning point, a new beginning, the start of the next chapter for the capital region. I am proud to announce that Global Foundries has secured agreement with the feds to receive $1.5 billion from my chips and science legislation. That is a lot of money. This is the largest chips award thus far in the nation and the very first for New York State. I wrote my chips and science law with upstate New York as the North Star. I wrote the bill with this very day in mind. We wanted to bring a new, growing, burgeoning industry that would have a future 
to the capital region and to upstate. And that's exactly what we are doing. And that is why I wrote this law. I wrote the law with this day in mind so that we could announce that thanks to CHIPS funding, there's $12 billion of new investment coming to the capital region, building a new state-of-the-art second chip factory, creating thousands upon thousands of good paying jobs, 1,500 manufacturing jobs and thousands of union construction jobs. This is going to triple the capacity for global foundries here in New York. Once the expansion is completed, global foundries will make more than 1 million of these chips every year. This folks, this is the future. This is the future for the capital region. This is the future for upstate New York. This is the future for America. Now, we're not making these things overseas anymore. We're not going to let foreign countries hold us hostage. They're going to be made right here in America and in Malta. So it's a great day. Today's the day we say to the world that the future of technology will be built in the capital region, not China. It'll be stamped, made in New York by Global Foundry's powerful workforce. Before I get into a little more substance, there are a lot of people I want to thank. Tom, of course. Secretary Ramondo, what a great partner she has been. Thank you for your amazing leadership for the nation. From our very first conversation, even before you became secretary, we talked about the importance of investments in Global Foundries and across upstate New York. Months after being confirmed, you jumped at my invitation to come here to Malta and you saw firsthand what was being done. We're here today because of your commitment. Today, folks, would not be possible without the leadership of the great Commerce Department team and this great Secretary of Commerce, Imanda. White House National Economic Council Director Lael Brainerd attending today on behalf of President Biden. It goes without saying, but we would not be here without President Biden. No one is more committed. I've talked to him at length on this issue. No one is more committed to bringing back American manufacturing and building a modern economy from the bottom up and the middle out that will bring new life to communities like upstate New York communities not only here, but throughout the Midwest and the rest of the country. And of course, my partner in all of this, my dear friend, Governor Hochul, Governor Kathy Hochul. And when I mean it, and when I say partner, I mean it. While we have worked to pass the chips and science law at the federal level, Governor Hochul has made New York State a national model. It's one of the very few states that's talked about when chip fabs and other new science technologies want to come here, and it's because they know they know, have a governor who understands this, who knows about it, and who acts upon it. She has the drive to meet the moment and matches what I was pushing for on the federal level at the state level. Our partnership at the federal and state level is a national model for working together. And I also want to thank our partner in Congress, Paul Tonko. He's a true champion for science and energy in the House at a time when it's needed. And of course, there are many others here today who are so important in getting all of this done. So today, though, is not just for the capital region. It's for all of upstate New York, where, where groundbreakings and announcements like this are going to be occurring from one end of our state to the other with so many different changes. The impact of global, global Foundry's expansion will benefit every corner of our state. It'll boost our workforce, help attract new supply chain companies, and secure upstate New York as the world hub for chip manufacturing. We're number one in something that's very, very important. Today, we answer the questions that many upstaters have asked. 
How can we bring jobs and industry back that we lost overseas for decades? How can we deal with the pain as we saw factory after factory, company after company leave, and then parents go to the airport to wave goodbye to their kids? They wanted to stay here in upstate New York, but there weren't the jobs and they left. That's not, not happening ever again because we're locating industries with an amazing future right here. And I feel so proud and good about that. So today, the federal government is taking real action to bring manufacturing back to America and ensure that this future century will be built, built by communities that powered New York's success last century, which Upstate did. Now, you may remember 15 years ago, I was here. Remember that? <laughs> I knew we could accomplish even more. And back then I said, Saratoga used to be known for inventing the potato chip, a different kind of chip. But now that joke is old. These potato chips and the joke have probably gone stale. But what I said then proved to be true. We're getting rid of the old chip and dealing with a new chip that has an amazing, amazing future. So that was fun. I only did one thing wrong. I didn't throw it far enough, you know. As, I, as people know, I was not much of an athlete. On our basketball team at Madison High School, our motto was, we may be small, but we're slow. Um, but anyway, seriously, the road to getting here was not simple. Three times I stood just outside where we are today at Global Foundries, back in early summer of 2020, when I first produced my Amer American Foundries Act and the Endless Frontier Act, which became Chips and Science, we said we were gonna make this happen. We've been fighting for it together, this great team, and now we have achieved it. Global Foundries is meeting the moment, this once in a generation moment, as is our Chips and Science law. So it's a great day, again, I just, it's so, this by the way, something like it has one billion little, whatever they're called, transistors right here. One billion, can you imagine? It's amazing, amazing. And it's the future, not those potato chips. Although we like them too, and I still eat them. Okay, folks, so it's a great day. And we invented the chip once, and once again, we are making them here, right here in upstate. It's a once in a generation federal investment, but it's only the beginning. The best days are still ahead for global foundries, for the capital region, and all of upstate New York. Thank you very much. Great to be here. Thank you. Now. Please join me in welcoming Secretary of Commerce Raimondo to the stage. Very tough act to follow. Maybe this stool will help me out. A very tough act to follow, but now you know why the Chips and Science Act got across the finish line because he didn't sleep until it did. You know, I go, and it's true, it's true. I go around telling people the Chips and Science Act passed because of Senator Schumer, uh, which is a fact, as he said, he was the driving force behind it. But now you can see for yourself what a driving force he is. And I will tell you what I think motivates him. And you can tell me if I'm right. It's you guys serving the people of New York. Yes, serving the country, serving the country, revitalizing manufacturing, but serving the people of the state he loves. So thank you, Senator, for your leadership. Uh, I have to say thank you to your leader, Tom Caulfield. That guy's unbelievable, unbelievable. I have rarely seen a chief executive 
who is as authentic and humble uh, as Tom Caulfield. And I want you to know when he talks to me, he doesn't brag so much about the billion transistors. He brags about you. The thing that makes him most excited is to watch the people who work here grow and flourish. So thank you, Tom. Governor Hochul, amazing. I Let me tell you folks, I used to be the governor of my state. It's a tough job and she does it beautifully and she has supported this company from day one. So I want to thank you, Governor, for your leadership. Congressman, Congressman Tonka, who was a broken record, constantly bugging me about this part of New York with good reason. So thank you. Uh, and my partner in the White House, Dr. Leo Brainard, who is an amazing woman, a brilliant economist, and serves the president so well. Thank you. Um, I want to say this. The one person um, who I know cares more about revitalizing American manufacturing than anyone I've ever known is my boss, President Biden. When the president-elect called me to say, hey, Gov, will you be the Commerce Secretary? He said, I want you to work with me to rebuild American manufacturing. He believes deeply that America is a place where we should make things. You cannot be a great country unless you make things, particularly advanced manufacturing. And that is what President Biden is doing. His investing in America agenda is about this. See, we believe America shouldn't just be the end of the supply chain. We're tired of being the end of the supply chain. We want to make advanced semiconductors right here in the United States of America, right here in Malta, New York. And that's why the president put his back behind the Chips and Science Act. And that's why this act became law. And that's why we are here making a once in a generation $50 billion investment in, in semiconductor manufacturing in this country. I am so proud to work for President Biden. I am so proud to work for the president because he believes in America, he believes in American manufacturing, and he knows that we are a great nation. And with these investments, with the Chips and Science Act, we are uh, ushering in a new era of American manufacturing. You guys know this. We invent, Silicon Valley is called Silicon Valley because we invented the semiconductor industry. And then we just watched, we watched it leave our shores over a period of decades and go to Asia. Well, now we're coming back. We are coming back. And decades from now, we, we lead now in every other aspect of the industry, but it's time to come back to fabs and manufacturing. And that's what this is all about. So as you've heard already today, uh, we are uh, announcing that we are uh, a preliminary term sheet with your company for a billion and a half dollar investment, the biggest so far of all of our chip grants. And it will allow uh, a new state of the art facility and significant expansion facility modernization here and in Vermont. I want to say just two quick things that haven't yet been said. First, you should know the new state-of-the-art fab here will be the first new foundry built to support current and mature technologies in decades. Or I'm not supposed to say current and mature, I'm supposed to say feature rich, says Dr. Caulfield. Um, but it, all joking aside, it's the first. And she made sure legacy was in the bill. This is the first new foundry built to support current mature nodes in this country in decades. These are the chips we need, as you well know, in cars, in military equipment, in so many of the things that power our daily lives. But here's another thing I want to highlight. We've heard about the cars and the phones and the dishwashers and everything, but this proposed investment will allow global foundries to bring uh, the manufacturing of your 22 FDX to the U.S. for the first time ever. Now. Why does that matter? It matters because that's a critical chip for our national security. That is a critical chip for the Department of Defense. So the durability of your 22 FDX makes them especially important for satellites and critical national security uses. By making these chips here, 
in the United States of America, finally, the Department of Defense will have access to GF's advanced 22 nanometer technology, which hasn't been possible until now, which means the DOD will finally have a steady, secure, domestic supply of these chips. That's a big deal. That is a big deal. So, yes, we're creating 10,000 plus good paying jobs. Yes, we're revitalizing this part of New York. Yes, we're revitalizing American manufacturing, but we are keeping ourselves safe, keeping the American people safe in the process. The final thing I will say is this, it's all because of you. It's all because of you. Fancy politicians up here, the boss over here, you guys get it done every day. We just met a few of you, Justin and Kim and Chris, incredible. Right, we met a few of the apprentices. We met some engineers. Thank you for what you do. Thank you for your hard work. Thank you to my own team for your hard work for bringing us here today. But the fact of the matter is my dad was in manufacturing. He worked at a watch factory. I come from Providence where they used to make a lot of watches. He said there's something special about making your living making things. But I would say on top of that, because you've dedicated your careers to global foundries, you're making things, you're making things that make every American safer and more secure. So on um, behalf of President Biden, we're proud of you and we're grateful for what you do here. Thank you. Thank you. Please join me in welcoming National Economic Council Director Brainerd to the stage. Well, it's, a, it's an exciting day, uh, and uh, I can tell you that uh, President Biden, Vice President Harris are just extremely excited uh, that this announcement uh, for Global Foundries uh, is being made today. I want to thank Secretary Raimondo for her incredible leadership and thank Governor Hockel and Congressman Tonka for their commitment to making sure that New York is the center of semiconductor innovation and manufacturing. And I especially want to applaud Leader Schumer for his vision and his determined efforts, starting with legislation back in 2020 and continuing every day to work this until we finally got the incredible Chips and Science Act that is bringing this announcement here today. So thank you all. I also just want to applaud all the people that work in the fab here uh, every day uh, for the important work that you do. Today's $1.5 billion in funding for Global Foundries advances the president's vision that we will make semiconductors here in America with American workers again. Global Foundries produces the chips that are critical in items we rely on every day, from cars to mobiles, phones to satellites. These are the chips where over-reliance on global supply chains led our economy to grind to a halt with price spikes and long wait times. Today's announcement delivers on the president's commitment to rebuild those supply chains right here in America so we will never see those kinds of lengthy delays, inflationary spikes that really ground our entire economy uh, to a halt when he got into office. Global Foundries is the dedicated supplier of the chips that power General Motors vehicles made by American union workers that this administration is very proud to support. It's also a key partner to our military. Today's investment will help protect national security by expanding domestic production of chips that are used in satellites and space communications. And it will create 10,000 family sustaining good quality jobs that provide pathways to the middle class right here in New York and in Vermont. Today's announcement will also include a commitment to develop workforce training and uh, sustaining services right here in this area. 
enabling workforce development agencies, unions, and other stakeholders to work together to provide opportunities for hardworking families to get jobs right here in their own communities. And that'll build on the important things that Global Foundries has already put in place, the project labor agreement here in New York, childcare services for employees, and its maintenance technician registered apprenticeship program that we just heard about today. Today's announcement is also taking place at the start of the administration's fourth Investing in America tour. We've got people all over the country at ribbon cuttings and announcements, which are demonstrating the power of the president's commitment working together with Congress and state and local officials everywhere to bring manufacturing back to America, to invest in our infrastructure, to invest in our future. And we're seeing it in the broader economy when communities like this have more people going back to work, uh, lower unemployment rates than they've seen for years, and we do see that in this area, you can also see the broader economy. We have the strongest growth of any of our uh, peer economies around the world. We have uh, unemployment that's been below 4% for two years now and inflation that's getting back to 2%. So what's good here, uh, in upstate New York is also good for the country. We can see it in communities all across the country. So I want to just again thank all of the leaders here in this room uh, who came together uh, to make this exciting announcement. Uh, and we are really looking forward uh, to working with you uh, over the next months and years to bring this to reality. Thank you very much. Thank you. Now, please join me in welcoming Governor Hochul to the stage. Good afternoon. Seriously? This is one of the biggest announcements our state has ever seen in its history. How about a little more excitement for this great day? Well, you know, last December I stood at uh, Albany Nanotech, where I know our leader of the Council of Economic, leader of the uh, National Economic Council is going right after we leave here. But I stood there alongside Majority Leader Schumer and Senator Gillibrand, and I said, uh, as clear as I could, New York State is setting the path for the future of the rest of the nation, and that was not an overstatement at all, especially in light of what we're doing here today. And today's historic investment from the Biden-Harris administration and the incredible work of Majority Leader Chuck Schumer in getting this over the finish line in a Senate that's sometimes hard to get things done, congratulations, because this is a very big deal. Thank you. And Majority Leader Schumer, I want you to know your jokes will never be stale here in the state of New York, okay? So don't you go worrying about that. Don't you go around, but also to have Secretary Mondo here for this special announcement. Talk about extraordinary leadership in a job where she has her eye around the globe, attracting businesses, making investments, taking care of 50 states. I'm starting to feel a little extra attention here in New York, okay? And I appreciate that, maybe because it's you know, two female governors who kind of understand the world we're in, but I know she gives a lot of extra love here to the state of New York, and today is proof of that. I want to thank you for making sure that you listen to Senator Schumer, you listen to Paul Tonko, but also to our president to execute his priorities, to, as you said so profoundly, bring back the jobs and manufacturing that we never should have lost. And I know a lot about this. I was born in Lackawanna, New York. Grandpa, dad, uncles all worked at the steel plant. All of a sudden, one day, 1980s, 20,000 jobs were up and gone. You know what that does to the psyche of an entire community, upstate New York? And then we lost Eastman Kodak jobs. We lost carrier jobs. This year. We were just taking it on the chin for decades. So those of you who are old enough to remember this, you probably have a lot of gray hair. But those younger people who don't know this, know that with announcements like today, 
That will never happen in your lifetime or your children's lifetime because we have turned the corner. We are seizing the future right here in the state of New York. So the leadership we have here. Also, I want to thank the labor force that's here, but also the men and women of labor who will be building this. I want to thank the building trades for them being out there during the cold days and during the pandemic and the hot days and doing their work. We have Mike Lyons here, the president of the Capital Region Building Trades. I want to give him a special shout out because it is your men and women who will be out there building this fabulous fab factory. And I want to thank you in advance. Also, we have from my team, president of Empire State Development, Hope Knight whose vision for bringing back the state is extraordinary, and Kevin Eunice, who makes the most amazing deals here, including this one and Micron. Let's give them a round of applause as well. They talk about the history of global foundries. It started with a $1.4 billion investment a long time ago. When that was an amount of money larger than probably most economies of any state. I mean, that was a big, big deal. And they promised to invest back in 2006 over $3 billion. Boy, you sure blew past that, Tom. Over $15 million investment because you saw the opportunity here. Once you planted the flag, you said, I'm going to make this flag even higher and higher and higher. And for that, we are a nationally recognized state for the work that you and your members do. So, Tom, Thank you for never giving up on New York, for believing us at a time when people stop believing. You were there and you're part of our great history and our great future. Let's give another round of applause to Tom as well. We've heard the story of our dependency on these chips that most people didn't even know what they were just a few short years ago. The dependency that came to light during the pandemic. And how do we know that here in the state of New York? because when we couldn't get those chips from overseas, literally shut down manufacturing of cars in our own state. We felt this profoundly and we said never again, never again can we be so dependent on support, foreign supply chains and all the uncertainty around geopolitical circumstances that we have no control over. We can't let our economy come down to that. So we said never again. The Biden administration said never again. And that's the genesis of building this up, working with the concept of saying, if we make those investments here, say build that industry here, invest in those who've already come before. If you do it here, the jobs will come, the supply chain will come, and we're seeing that and feeling this every single day. The energy is palpable. I was just in Rochester this morning. I was in Buffalo on Friday. Across the state of New York, they're feeling the effect of global foundries and what we're doing in Albany, at Albany Nanotech, and all across the state, the workforce development, it's happening in an extraordinary way and a pace that's so fast you don't even feel it. It's so fast. But I'm proud of what the state's role was in this as well. Because all I knew is when we got that done, we high five getting that over the finish line, the Jury Leader and to the Bride Administration, we said, that's amazing. But I knew as the governor, there's 49 other states who want this. And I knew I had to make sure that we were competitive that we would offer something that no other state did. So I went to my legislature. I have Carrie Warner here who represents this area. I have Pat Fahey here who represents the capital region, Albany, Albany Nanotech, other leaders who've joined us. We have the mayor of Albany here to so, show the synergy around here. But I said, what can New York State do to make sure they don't just stay in America, grow in America, but they don't end up in California, Ohio, Pennsylvania, Arizona? Because one thing I know about our state, we are competitive and we do not like to lose. So I said, how does $10 billion stand, sound to match that, what they're doing at the federal level, and make that available to companies that will follow the rules we set forth to support the social policy objectives, to lift up the workforce, to get diverse background from all the from your builders to your workers, offer child care, make sure that your programs are green and sustainable. Can you do all that? And if the answer is yes, we will support you. We'll be all in. And that's exactly what we did when the legislature passed at my initiative, a $10 billion green chips bill to complement what we're doing at the federal level. That's why we're able to make investments like today and in future places like Micron as well. So our 
announcement here. We didn't do 1.5 billion. I'm sorry. I'm just one state. But um, but how does 853 million sound? That's exactly what we're doing. Oh, I made a mistake. It's $872 million. <laughs> 575 from the Green Ships Initiatives. There you go. So we're here to put uh, our support with your investments. But again, project labor agreement, diversity targets, subsidized childcare. We say you'll get this support. You create the jobs, create your 1,500 jobs, create the construction jobs, and we're there to support you as you continue to grow. So this is a proud day for all of us. Amazing workforce. You're the most talented people in our nation. I could not be prouder to represent every one of you. And the people who just said will not give up until this gets done, President Biden, Senator Schumer, Kirsten Gillibrand, her involvement as well, and our Secretary of Commerce. This is the dream team. Historians will look back. What was the turning point in that trajectory of people leaving our country and leaving taking jobs overseas, offshoring. What changed all that? And there'll be just two words. It'll be the Biden administration. The Biden administration stepped forward and says, no longer, no longer. Let's regain that mojo and that sense of accomplishment and exceptionalism that we always had in this great country. And I want to thank the president. I want to thank the majority. I want to thank our secretary and all those who made this happen. Because this is the day history will look back upon and say it happened here forever altering the course of history. And that's not even to mention what we're going to do with AI. I'll do that another time because I don't want to take away from this, but we are going to be the epicenter of AI innovation because we declared it so and we're putting the money behind it and everybody's so excited as well. So it's all happening right here in the great state of New York. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Now, please join me in welcoming Congressman Tonko to the stage. Well, now that you've all been warmed up, good afternoon. All right, we're doing it. What a momentous day for our region, for job creation, union jobs, and a great momentous moment, uh, day for innovation, which is driving our economy and allows for world leadership. This tremendous investment is the culmination of many years of work of Democrats on the Hill in Washington and in the administration. So first and foremost, I do want to thank our president, President Biden, for his vision. He knows that leadership is about vision and it's about taking us to higher ground aspirational outcomes. That's what he's all about. And so I thank him for providing that sort of vision, honed by the whole set of concerns for supply chain needs and by the requirement and the desire to create sound paying jobs, union jobs, and lowering costs for consumers. So this is a culmination of all of that activity driven by this vision. What I perhaps most respect about his leadership is that he embraces science. He doesn't reject it. He respects the fact that science is required to respond to the many complex issues that surround us now as common folk living on a planet Earth. We need to embrace science to address many of the concerns. So we stand here because of that vision. Thank you, Senator Schumer, for your leadership in the Senate for your vision. I have to thank also, at the time, Speaker Pelosi, who was so determined to get something done on chips and science, that working with her and folks like uh, Representative Doris Matsui, who's been a big champion for semiconductor chips and uh, nanoscience activity, myself included with great assignments on the Energy and Commerce Committee and the Science, Space and Tech Committee. We got this across the finish line, both houses, and landed this on the president's desk. And today, the outcome is a bill, a law, has become a law that now invests in America. Make it in America is that theme. And that rings so true and boldly, does it not, Mayor? We, we love that, make it in America.
So it began with investments, making certain that we invest in clean energy, we invest in infrastructure, and so much more. The CHIPS investment is emblematic of how that broader Investing in America Act is enabling us to invest in infrastructure and in soundness of building that infrastructure. Thank you, Mike Lyons and the trades, the building trades for all the great work you do. Thank you for those union jobs that are delivered into our community. I consider myself very lucky as a representative of New York 20 to be able to claim this plant, this facility as uh, the result of all of that great work. Now to the leadership here, Dr. Tom Caulfield, thank you for your leadership at GF. Thank you to all of the workers. The GF team surpasses any expectation of greatness. You have made such a big difference with your talent, with your skill, and with your outright passion. As we celebrate this investment, I can't help but recall history here. The fact that as we connected the great ocean of the Atlantic with the Great Lakes, with this dream called the Erie Canal Way, that was New York leadership again, breaking ground, providing a vision, and not only strengthening New York and her economy, but sparking a westward movement. What a tremendous opportunity as we gave birth to a number of towns called mill towns, that became the epicenters of invention and innovation. And eras of history have eclipsed since then, and now a grand eclipsing from work of the past to now a more futuristic, advanced manufacturing semiconductor outcome. A tremendous shot in the arm for the sense of place of upstate New York, a fertile ground by which to invest in the semiconductor industry. You know, I think back of my days in the State Assembly as energy chair, when we looked at regions of the upstate New York put into certain zones of technology, here in the capital region, we focused on energy and environment. And as energy chair of the State Assembly, it was a great thing to produce a lot of investment that from the state perspective allowed, again, for us to be a logical choice for that activity here today. So like those centuries old undertakings on the Canal Way, this semiconductor investment will unlock untold benefits that will continue to grow and shape our nation for the better through manufacturing of chips, for cars, for EVs, for our national security, for internet, and it goes on and on. As we celebrate this momentual, momentual, uh, momentual moment, know that our work is not done. There is still unfinished business, and we're going to continue to work in Washington, as the Senator and I know, to push hard for that national center for the Semiconductor Technology Center that will enable us to be that visual that is of a great epicenter of involvement here. It's a logical choice. We have state-of-the-art manufacturing. We have sound investments deeply rooted and respected in R&D. And we have workforce development programs that are so innovative and working so well. So let's go forward and march from this victory to others again will conquer it because of a workforce like this at GF. Thank you, Global Foundries team, for being such a great incentive and such a great inspiration. Thank you, Tom, for your leadership. Thank you, Senator. Let's go forward and march forward, Excelsior, upward and onward. Thank you. Now, please join me in welcoming Tom back up to the stage. Okay, let's bring this home. <laughs> Look, in all seriousness, I'm, uh, I'm truly humbled uh, by the amazing support and appreciation for what GF does for the world, for society, and what our, our great team does each and every day, not only in Malta, in Vermont, and around the world. I'm especially grateful and appreciative of the White House, the Department of Commerce, Senator Schumer, uh, the, the, the teams in Vermont that have all supported us through the, the, the 12 years of our existence, and I look forward to the next decade together. And thank you, lastly, for turning this great vision into a reality and for your trust and belief in Global Foundries. Onward and upward. Thank you very much. Schumer have been on a mission to strengthen the US competitiveness and resiliency of the US. Our CEO, Dr. Thomas Caulfield to the stage to get us. And thank you 
to our amazing GF team. It's New York State. The position is a global leader in semiconductor manufacturing. We are a global team and we act and work as a global entity.